Cougar have improved their quality a fair bit, which we can see on the Sepassion, which is basically an updated 300M, but smaller. There's a lot to like about this one, and in some ways, it feels smaller than the FK2. Here's a quick look side by side with the 300M, but I'll get to the measurements later. Now looking at the materials, there's textured rubber on both sides, and this is something that can feel slightly irritating, but these ones do actually feel pretty good, except for my little finger. They grip well too, but I would prefer untextured rubber. The shell is smooth plastic, feels great, high quality, but the logo feels and looks a little cheap. It's a fairly standard design, with a thumb curve on the left and a flared out back on the right, which I think it needs because it's a thin mouse so it needs it for comfort, but it does have ledges in all the right places to assist with grip, and some very subtle comfort groups, which feel decent, could be deeper though. Looking at it from the base will make the shape more obvious. You can see it has a little display showing DPI and rate. It has some presets, but you can alter them by holding in the left button, then using the side buttons. So you can set it from 50 to 7200 in steps of 50. You can also alter the rate, but if you hold that button in, you can adjust the liftoff distance from low to high, or turn on angle snapping. So there's no need for software, and to adjust the lighting, you can use the button on top. But that also means you can't remap the buttons unless you do it within a game. From the side, we can see the button slope is gradual, with the hump more toward the back, at about 3.7cm high, or just under 1.5 inches. The grip width is quite thin at just under 5.5cm, and the length is around 12cm. So it's not really the 2 to 1 ratio, and that can affect grip. And because it's a low mouse, it's harder to palm. I'd say under 18cm would be okay. Claw grip, I can't rest the back of my palm on it because of the length. Even with my fingers moved forward, but if your claw grip doesn't need that, it would be fine up to about 20cm. But really, I don't think your hand should be wider than 9.5cm for comfort. Fingertip grip puts my thumb slightly behind the front side button, which isn't good placement. I think ideally, you'd want 19.5cm for fingertip. But really, it could suit 17 to 20 Again, these are general guides and it really depends on how you hold the mouse. Some people like to rest their fingers forward, whereas I prefer to have mine back a bit. This shape does seem decent, but it's not up with the best, which is the main reason it won't rank as high as the top mice, despite having a lot of good points. And here it is next to the G102 and Death Adder. You can see it's sort of in between, but definitely more to the small side. Now a button sound check for quality and feel. Left and right have a bit of a hollow click to them, maybe because of the slight pre-travel before the click. Overall they did feel good, and they perform well in game. The middle button is really hard to press in. The wheel is low, so that's not a great button, but scrolling up and down feels great. It has noticeable steps, and it's quite smooth. It's quite good for an untextured wheel. The side buttons feel good too, with a good amount of travel and a nice click. In the latency testing, it performs well against the G703, but sometimes it seems a little inconsistent, and maybe with a very slight delay. Nothing I'd really worry about though. The build seems solid, with no rattles when tapping or shaking it. And the mouse feet seem high quality, they glide smoothly. The cable is a bit of a letdown. The rubber is a bit grippy at times, and it's lacking in flexibility. Even in a mouse bungee, it's kind of awkward. And with a bit of cable, it weighs about 97 grams. A mouse this size, I'd expect about 85 grams. But maybe that screen is adding some extra weight. Personally, I would have preferred software instead. The sensor is the 3330, which is a top optical, but it's not the best implementation. It's good while rocket jumping, and I couldn't make it spin out, even moving it as fast as I could. However, in the tilt slam test, sometimes it just doesn't track. And then later, doing that test, I did get it to spin out. So slight problem there, but not a big deal. In the sniper test, it tracks pixel by pixel, and it does it smoothly. And as far as I can tell, it doesn't have noticeable acceleration or deceleration. Liftoff distance is very low on the low setting, under a DVD on both cloth and hard pads. But it goes up to just over one DVD with the high setting. In the line test, it's mostly good, but it seems to have a few more jagged edges than the 3366. I've highlighted a few. Not enough to really cause a concern, but something worth noting. To conclude, while it's not perfect, it is a very good mouse. And it's mainly the shape holding it back. It's not that it's a bad shape, it's just not as good as the other ones. In fact, if you just put your hand on it in a store, you'll probably think it feels really comfortable and it's good. But even being fairly comfortable with this kind of shape, I don't think I can aim it as well as something like the EC2A or FK2, or even the G102, even though the sides on this one are much better. It has some very minor issues with the sensor implementation, but I think along with the possible button latency, it could be solved with firmware. So check their website to see if they've offered any updates 
updates. Either way, even right now, it's still worth a look if this is the kind of mouse that suits you, even more so if you get it on special. So as usual, Cougar is a brand that's worth keeping an eye on now. They've got some great products coming, and I only see them improving from here. So special thanks to Cougar for sending this out for review, and if you want to help support the channel, I'll leave some links in the description. As always, subscribe, like and share this video, and I'll catch you in the next.